De Broglie Wavelength, Extending Wave Particle Duality. In this video, we'll learn to solve for the de Broglie wavelength of an object and explain why macroscopic matter does not exhibit wave-like behavior. De Broglie challenged the idea that only light displayed wave-like properties and declared that matter must too. Previously, people had considered light to be a wave, a thought that we now know to be only half of the story, and matter to be particles. De Broly challenged the latter part of this, stating that matter also had wave-like properties that was inversely proportional to its momentum. From here, we get the equation of the de Broly wavelength being equal to h over the momentum, h once again being Planck's constant. I'm going to take a moment right now often also to remind you that often when doing these sorts of problems, you're going to need to know what kinetic energy is. So just a quick reminder that you'll know that kinetic energy is always equal to 1 half mv squared before we move on to the next problems. So now what can we use this for? We can find the de Broglie wavelength for anything that we know the kinetic energy or the momentum of. So here we will find the wavelength of a very small particle, an electron. We'll then move on to solve for the wavelength of a macroscopic item as well. We'll start with our two equations that we introduced and reminded you of in the last slide. That's for the de Broglie wavelength, but we need velocity. But we have kinetic energy. And so we'll also need to know that the kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv squared. And we'll use this to solve for v, and then plug v into the wavelength. So using this, we'll solve for v equals 2 times the kinetic energy over the mass. We'll fill in our values. Now what often comes up now is knowing what the mass is. This is something that you would look up. You wouldn't be expected to memorize the mass of an electron. And so you would go to a table or the back of the book, if it was an exam, the front of the exam, to look up the mass of an electron. And from here we can solve for our velocity. And we will plug that in to our de Broglie wavelength equation. You may notice while doing this that we get mass in there twice. And you may say, can I leave this as a variable and solve in at the very end? And yes, you can. Some people like to do that. Most people prefer to type it in two separate times. And so that's what I'm showing you how to do here. And we get a de Broglie wavelength of 9.70 times 10 to the negative 6 meters. And we can simply fill in all of our values. Type into our calculator to get our answer. Now, you may be saying, why are you calculating the de Broglie wavelength? I didn't ask for the de Broglie wavelength in this question. But by solving this, we can see something interesting. As you can see here, the wavelength of this is extremely tiny in comparison to the size of the baseball itself. Whereas in the previous problem, the wavelength of the electron was quite large in comparison to the actual size of an electron. This is why we only see wave particle duality in very, very small particles. In the larger particles with larger masses, your wavelength is so small that in comparison to the size of the object, you can't see it at all. Hopefully now you can solve for the de Broglie wavelength of an object, whether that be from giving directly, being given directly the mass and the velocity, or perhaps using the kinetic energy equation equals one half mv squared to solve for the velocity. And you can explain why macroscopic matter does not exhibit wave-like behavior.